an alteration. I was like, typically, I'd go down to Home Depot and get what I need to back and do it. Well, it depends. You know, what kind of what kind of time delay would I have in dealing with the city? Part of that depends on when you start talking to them, um, because the commission meets every month, right? right? And it also depends on what you want to do. Remember, not everything counts as an exterior alteration that has to get approved. Right. Ordinary maintenance and repair doesn't. You saw there are a number of things here that. Don't, if it's not visible from the public right of way, which means the street or the sidewalk, that's fine. You don't need a certificate of appropriateness for that. If you're going to do something to the front of your house or the sides that are visible, you would. Um, so it really just depends on what you're doing. But let's say worst case scenario, the day after a historic preservation <coughs> commission meeting, you decide you want to make a change and you contact Diana and you say, I want to do whatever to the front of my house. And normally I would just go down to Home Depot and get my stuff and do it this weekend because the day after the Historic Preservation Commission meeting is a Friday. Um, but obviously I can do that now because I have to get a certificate of appropriateness. So the timing of that is um, the, the meetings once a month and the application deadline for a certificate of appropriateness application is 15 days in advance of that. So we would. So if you turn in your application the day after a commission meeting, you, you would have to wait a month for that approval. If it were something that the commission needed to review, it may be that what the work that you want to do doesn't even require a certificate. So we can help clar clarify that for you. Um, but if you do need the certificate, then um, it could be up to a month. But the the bonus, the good side of this though, is that there is a tax exemption that's available to homeowners of historic homes. And it depends, it's available depending on how much money you spend on improving or repairing your home. So that's kind of the upside to the, the extra time that you might factor into your project. Now, if you have a dispute or a disagreement with you guys, mm -hmm. what's, what's the recourse? What would be my recourse? The, you, if you go to the Historical Commission and they deny your application, you have the right to appeal that to the Planning Commission. And if Planning Commission upholds the Historical Commission, you can appeal to City Council. So the, those, that, that would be your recourse. Or what a lot of people do if their project is denied is they come back and they work with staff and we try to figure out what would be an acceptable project and then we go back to the Commission and very often the Commission will approve it. Although it's better to do that on the front end. It is, it sure. is. Yeah. yeah, but some people come and mm -hmm. They've got architect's plans and they're ready to go and they're like, just stamp it and let me go on my merry way. And unfortunately, they haven't taken the time to get the information they needed ahead of time. The reason I was asking, we have a property in Tomball, we've been having some problems with it. Their, their commission or zoning plan meets quarterly. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Because we had put some uh, iron rails up for my father so he yeah. could walk down the stairs. We have a cast uh, concrete porch, it's got the columns. And we put the iron rails into the concrete, and I wasn't able to go around the porch. And is that going to be a problem now to, to add on to that? So is the, the porch is like, you know, okay. two feet off the ground. Okay. Which is, we, <coughs> It's so here's a triplex, so he's got oh, okay. tenants coming out the side. Gotcha. And I worry, you know, about somebody, <coughs> you know, just falling off. Right. Okay. Uh, there's no way to really attach anything unless you screwed it in. You know, that's, and I don't want to have to maintain, you know, wood underneath. Right. Yeah. If you already have the the metal railing and you just wanted to extend it around the rest of the porch. Right, that's what I'm Then the, the metal typically would not be considered an appropriate alteration, but because you already have it and there's like safety reasons involved, I think the commission would consider that. Because I'm not going to, I mean, it's got the columns, brick columns, and uh -huh. I'm not going to take those out. I just need okay. to right. attach those right. to the side. Right. The, the important thing when you're looking at something like that is you, you would want the metal railing you choose to be as visually 
unobtrusive as oh, yeah, possible. Oh, yeah, I'm not going to do any of So you're not going to no, do some yeah, crazy, no. you know, grapes on the vine or whatever. No, thing. it would just, um, it's just one single, right? Know, just right. more safety than anything. And, and, and so you want it to be visually unobtrusive and reversible. So, and that's really, I think, you know, when you, if you find a design that you want, they can help, you know, help you go through that process. But you know, these guys also know how um, the Americans with Disabilities Act works, and they can give you some guidance about, you know, how tall railings need to be for safety in, in those kinds of situations. I didn't put it up because I didn't really want anybody sitting on it, you know? Uh -huh. Right. So, I mean, I know. I'm not sure that. Well, we're you want to go with the route. spikes on the top then. Yeah. <laughs> you know? No? Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> sure. But, but yeah, you, that sort of thing, I mean, the city can yeah. work with you. Yeah, call yeah. us and we'll talk about it and we'll try to find a compromise or a solution to whatever the problem is. Yeah, it really is a, a problem solving yeah. discussion. So, Wendy. Um, and I, I think we talked about this several months ago, but you mentioned that. If I was just going to come in and change out a door, it may just be a matter of taking it strictly to your department. It may not even need to go through and That's get a right. COA. Right. Send me a picture of the specs, mm -hmm. and it looks like, okay, you're replacing your Home Depot door with your Craftsman style door, and then it gets to you, and you yes. prove it. It actually just, that's where it stops. That's right. That's a good point. There's some very minor alterations that staff can approve that don't even require commission review. That's right. We wish there were more of them. Yes, hopefully down the road that will happen. That. Yeah. Because there's so many things that are not controversial that, that homeowners want to do that really are completely appropriate that right now need to go to the historical commission that we really think staff could just sign off on. And that would save the commission time and everybody time would win. And everybody would win. With yeah, that. so we're working on that. When we when we get ready to bring that forward, we want you all to come out and support it. Administrative review, right? Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> okay. Yes, because that would be great for everybody, and these guys don't have that um, ability to do that right now, just yet. We're, we're trying to make the case. Is this the draft that's going to be going to the HGHC? It's very close to yeah, what okay. will be going. There, there will probably be some more tweaks too. Yeah, okay. there, we're missing a picture of compatible info, but we got some examples from around the country today, and we're going to put a couple of those in, but otherwise it is... Um, it's complete. So by the 12th, we should definitely have something on the website that's exactly what's going to go to the HUC. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so really, I mean, it's not going to look at it. Yeah. 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 So this, this is almost exactly what okay. it would be. I, right. yeah. I think there might be a few little Our, our goal with the public meetings is to get your feedback about, you know, so you have a chance to look at it after and get your feedback to tell us is there information that we need to include that we haven't that would help you understand what is in here? Are there things that are confusing? Or you know, so if you and your neighbors have those kinds of comments, we really want to know now so that we can go ahead and make those improvements before it gets published. But otherwise, it's probably going to be very minor editing at this point. And nothing on landscaping. Oh. <laughs> Nothing invasive. No. I mean, that's I just thought me. about that. <laughs> yes. What else? Like we said, the, the, the design guidelines draft is available online. Um, you can look at that at your pleasure. If you have questions, call the planning department. Um, in the next couple of days, because we're going to the commission with this next Thursday. So um, get those comments in. We can make any last minute changes at the beginning of next week, and then we will be rocking and rolling. Okay. Thank well, thank you, you everybody thank for coming you. out. Really appreciate it, and have a great evening. You too. Thank you.